Gentlemen, welcome to this week's edition of the Manlyhood Mancast. This week, we're going to get into the core of core ops. What are core ops? It's an organization's mission, purpose, vision, and their values. Let's look at what those are right after this. Are you ready to live life to the full? Are you ready to rise up and live a life of honor? Are you ready to boldly step into a life of courage? This is the Manlyhood Mancast, and here's your host, Josh Atcher. Gentlemen, welcome back to the Manlyhood Mancast. I'm your host, Josh Hatcher, and I am really glad that you guys chose to tune in to this week's episode. I have really had the privilege of doing some amazing work here with the Manlyhood Mancast. The work that we do in our Facebook group, the Manlyhood Man Cave, where men can work together to level up. They can post their thoughts. They can engage in interesting discussions, but really, ultimately, you can join with a band of brothers that wants to see you become more. And the guys that are in that group will tell you they've gotten a lot out of being a part of that, of being a part of something bigger. I firmly and truly believe that what we're doing here at Manlyhood is a movement. And we want to see men across the country level up and step up into all they were meant to be. I'm excited about it, and I'm glad that I can share it with you. So if you appreciate and if you want to support what we're doing, I want you to subscribe to this. If you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, like, comment, share the video. If you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple or any of the podcast places that you listen, please share that episode, like it, subscribe, leave a review. It helps us to tell others what we're doing here so that we can get more men and we can walk them along this journey of manhood together. So I wrote a book, guys. I wrote a few books. One of those is called Core Ops. It's about finding your purpose, your mission, your vision, and your values. And I wrote this book as kind of a guide to help you do that, to walk you through it. It was actually born out of a small group study that I had put together. Um, and we've used it at the Forge uh, Men's Weekend when, when we have done that in the past. And it's really just an opportunity to walk through the process of understanding why you're here, what you're meant to do, and how you're going to do it. That's really what the core of, of this is. If you think about um, different organizations, different businesses, you know they have a mission statement. They have a values statement. They've got their purpose all of it kind of boiled down. I think of organizations, even like uh, military organizations, like the Marine Corps or the Army. And not only do they have that core ops defined and identified, but it really determines how and why they do what they do. So let's start by identifying the first element of your core operating procedures, of your core ops, which is your purpose. And your purpose defines your why. It answers the question, why are you here? Why do I exist? And I do believe that, yes, organizations have these things, but I think individuals need to work through them as well. I think that as an individual, taking the time to work through and to find and to understand your purpose is a very valuable thing. It is really important that you understand that you were made on purpose and for a purpose. It's important to know that your purpose is eternal. It's not temporary, not fleeting. I know a lot of people will get hung up when they will try to define their purpose by something that they like to do. You know, they find joy in running, for example. So my purpose is to be a runner. No, it's not. Because what happens when you're injured? What happens when you lose your leg? Then you can't run. So then you have no purpose. Why exist, right? We see this a lot, especially with like single mothers or really even married mothers who oftentimes will hit this point where their kids will grow up and leave home. And then they have built their purpose on the idea that they are a mother and that they care for their children. And that purpose doesn't feel like it fits with this new role in their life. 
as their children don't need them to wipe their butts and to clean up and cook for them anymore. And it causes a lot of women to break down and have an identity crisis. And I know that this happens with men. Like if we lose a job and we have maybe identified our purpose with that job, it's really important to understand that your purpose is broad. Your purpose is eternal. And your purpose is something that no matter what happens to you, that's why you exist. I'll read some examples as we get to the end of this of what Manlyhood's purpose is, what Josh Hatcher's purpose is, and I think it might help you get a clearer picture and understanding of how this works. But I want you to be thinking about it and understand that it's also something that you don't want to rush into defining. And if you find yourself having had define it and then down the road you're like, I didn't get that right, it's okay. Erase it and start over. It's all right. But take the time to really truly understand your purpose because I believe that part of a man's purpose is the act of finding his purpose. I think it's probably just as important as actually having and knowing that purpose is the art of trying to find it and working through it. I think it helps to build you as a person if you take the time to understand why you're here and why you exist. Guys, the next part of your core ops is your mission statement. You have to develop this mission statement that really identifies what you're here to do. Because now that you know who you are and why you're here, what are you here to do? And over time, an organization or a person may have different missions. And so you might define your mission based on where you're at in your life, knowing that it might change down the road. That's okay. That's perfectly acceptable if this changes, if your mission changes. But here's what, um, what that looks like. Your mission statement puts into words what you're here to do. You write it out and you make it clear. And what it does is it sets your intention. It says, I am going to do this. And if you use it in conjunction with your purpose and with your vision, what it does is it's, it's like getting into the car and plugging in the GPS and then putting in the coordinates. How powerful would your life be if you had that kind of clarity in your destination? If you knew exactly where you were going, if you knew this is what I'm going to do. When something comes along your way and it doesn't fit in and it doesn't, uh, it's not what you're supposed to be doing, it's easier to say no to it if you know what your mission is. It's a side quest and you can say no to those. So that mission is the road that you're on right now to get to where you're going. It's the direction you're headed, but your vision is farther out. Your vision statement is farther out. Your vision is your preferred objectives. It's where you're headed. It's a goal with a plan that's centered around your purpose and your mission. So you know and understand your purpose and your mission, and you can see where is this going to lead and what is this going to look like in 5, 10, 20 years. So if you continue working your mission, what will that look like in 5 years? What will that look like in 10 years? That is your vision statement. And it's really hard. Some people are naturally visionaries. They can see the future. And I don't mean like in the astrophysical kind of way. I just mean they can see ahead. They can, they can foresee by looking at what's going on. They can really make a good calculation. Some people are just naturally gifted at it. The rest of us have to work at it a little bit. And that's okay. But if you know why you're here, and you know what you're meant to do, and you know who you are, you can see it clearer, and you can get a clear picture of what that looks like for you. Guys, the next part of your core ops is your values. And this is very important, because everybody has values. You all value things. You all have values that are innate, that are core values that are in you, that define the way that you view the world. A lot of people just deny that they have them or they don't understand they have them and you may have unspoken ones that you've never even thought about. That's all right. As long as you know that they exist, you can start working towards really fully identifying what they are. Because to value something is to give it worth. And there are things that either knowingly or unknowingly have worth or value in our lives that are important to you. Things that guide your decision making or your relationships. These values are important. And so they affect your personal relationships 
And they affect your business relationships and they affect the decisions that you make because you make them and you act according to your values. And if your values aren't clearly defined or if you have compromised on your values, you're going to make mistakes and you're going to know that are mistakes and you're going to have regrets. So listen, if we take the time to identify what the core values are, the things that are most important to you, those core values, you're going to then understand when decisions come along and you get that gut check. It's not just a gut check or an intuition or a feeling. You're making a decision based on your values. This is wrong for me to do. I'm not going to do it. This is right. It lines up with who I am. I'm going to do this. What it does is give you guiding principles by which to lead your life. All right, so look, we're going to look at Josh Hatcher's personal mission, vision, and values statements. All right, so let's look at my purpose first. What is my purpose? My purpose is to live a life of love and service to God, my family, and my community. I know, it might sound kind of generic. It might sound kind of broad. But I'm telling you, when I view it that way, it gives me clarity. It gives me clarity. Because my purpose is broad. And my purpose is not super specific. But it is me. This is who I am. This is what I'm meant to do. This, is, this defines me. That I'm here in order to live a life of love and service to God, to my family, and to my community. And when I do that, I am at the best version of myself. Everything I do falls into these categories. It sums it all up. Then we're going to look at my mission here, guys. My mission is to use my talents and abilities to enrich and lead in the lives of my family, my friends, and my community, and to all those in my expanding circle of influence. That's what I'm here to do. I'm going to take the things that I've been blessed with, the things that I've learned, and I'm going to use them to lead, to enrich the lives of the people around me. And with the full understanding that that circle that is around me will grow. I know that it grows. It grows every day. I come across new people and I meet new people. And my goal, my job is to make sure that I am enriching and leading. No matter where my status is, whether anybody's following me or not, my job is to offer these things. And that's what I try to do. So if I look at my vision itself, my vision is I will live as an ambassador of Christ and lead my family while I find meaning and value in my work while building passive income streams and mentoring and encouraging men and women. So I recognize that my vision is out there. If I'm looking at what it's going to look like in five, 10 years from now, honestly, I wrote this five years ago. And I would like to think that this is what I'm starting to do. This is what I'm doing in my life. I am living as an ambassador of Christ. So all of the things I do, the most important thing to me is to make sure that I represent Jesus. That matters to me. I know that doesn't matter to everybody and I'm not here to shove it down your throat. I'm just here to tell you that that's why I'm here. That's why I do everything I do. I'm an ambassador. I represent him and I lead my family. When I wrote this, most of my kids were home and leading my family looked a lot different then than it does now. But it still is a part of my vision. Even though my kids are on their own, I still look at myself as a leader. Whether they make their own decisions or not, whether they make good or bad decisions, my job is to make sure to give them a good example to follow. To find meaning and value in my work. Yeah, because sometimes it feels like it doesn't have any meaning. Sometimes the work that I'm doing for somebody else feels like it's meaningless and I have to choose to find that meaning. I have to choose to find that value in the things that are in front of me. And yes, I want to build passive income streams, and I'm working on that. I have some that are generating a little bit of income on the side of what my main source of income is, because I believe that the, the, if we really truly want to find wealth, that is something that happens as we build passive income streams. I do the work up front, and that pays off over time, and I'm building that. That's, that's what I'm working on. It's not the most important thing to me, but it is important, and I care about it, and I want to make sure I do that. And I can see myself in five years, maybe even 10 years. I'd, I'd like to think five years. I'd like to see those passive income streams be more than I'm making through any other sources. And I recognize my role here, guys, is mentoring and encouraging men and women. 
not just men, and I know a lot of what I do through manlyhood is for men, and that's the heart of who I am and, and really what I feel called to do, but I also try to encourage women as well. There are women in my life, and I don't want them to feel unencouraged around me. I don't want them to think that I only talk to men or that I'm unapproachable or that I'm not, you know, Uncle Josh or whatever my role is in their life. I want to be an encouragement to and a mentor to everybody that I come across. That's something that I, I strive to do. And in that also means to be mentored. I also, you know, I'm not saying that I, that I think that I'm better than everybody, that everybody has to follow me. I mean, I can learn. I want to learn from everybody. So I also took my my vision, and I boiled it down. I tried to make it simple. That's a lot. That's a mouthful. So this is what my vision, if I boil it down to the simplest possible form, it's represent, value, build, mentor, encourage. These are the things that I'm meant to do. That's what I want to do. That's where I see myself headed. That's the direction I'm going. And then guys, these are what my values are. And I recommend that as you make your values, I recommend that you pick no more than 12, no more than 12 core values, but honestly, five to 10, closer to five, it's going to be a better number that you can really truly identify with and care about. There are other things that you value, but are they the core of your values? So listen to these. My first value is God deserves first place. Two, my family matters. Three, be authentic. This one really matters a lot to me. I want to be authentic. I want to be real. I want to be who I am all the time. Whether the camera's on or the camera's off, you're going to see the real me. Whether I'm in front of people or whether I'm alone, I want to be the real me all the time. The next value, guys, is to be humble but confident. I do believe in this. I do believe that I don't want to take credit where it's not due, but I also want to make sure that I'm not so humble that I'm not confident. My next value, guys, is creativity matters. I believe this. I believe that we are created by a creator in his image and that we're meant to create. So I love creativity and I want to be creative in the things I do. I want to put the time in them to make sure that they are expressive and that they are creative and, and they're interesting and that they reflect who I am and who I am made to be. And also guys, my next value, it ties into this is excellence matters. I don't want to put out crap. I don't want to make something if it's not good. I don't want to half butt anything. I want to whole butt everything, okay? Excellence matters. And the next one, guys, leadership. And the next one, guys, leadership belongs in all areas of life. Whether you are the top dog or whether you're the new guy that has no say and just the peon, whether you're the private in the army or the commander in chief, leadership belongs in all levels. And if you don't know what leadership is, take the time to learn what leadership is. I think I'd like some, to do some podcast episodes on that soon and break down some of the core of what it means to be a leader. But I do believe, guys, it's important to me. It belongs in all areas of life. I, I thrive when I'm in an environment where there's a strong leader. And I struggle if I have to lead where there is not. And so I have to learn to make sure that I that I hold this value true. I have to stay true to this value. And if there's not leadership, I will create the leadership for myself. And that is how we get through it. That is how we survive and how we thrive by putting leadership in all areas of life. So guys, that's my personal mission, vision, and values. Let's look at the manlyhood purpose, mission, vision, and values. And the purpose of it is this. Because the world needs men to lead in their families and communities, and because so many men have struggled to understand their value, manlyhood exists to help men become better men. That's what our purpose is. We've identified what the problem is. We've identified that's the reason why, because this issue exists, because there are struggles with men that need help to lead, and there are struggles with men who don't know what their value is, how important they are. That's why manlyhood is here to help men be better men. Now, our mission, what we're here to do, the manlyhood mission is to educate, equip, and entertain men in an engaging way. I know lots of ease because it was kind of fun, but it's the truth. I want to educate men. I want to teach them. I want to equip them. I want to give them tools that they can take to their life and they can use it to become better. And I want to entertain men because I think that if it isn't fun and if we can't laugh and if we can't appreciate creativity and humor and all of these things, then what good is it? It's not going to be engaging. 
That's what we want. We want it to be engaging. I don't want to just put this out there into the ether and have it just sit there. I want this to matter to people. I want it to matter to you. So the work that I do at Manlyhood, guys, this is the mission that we have. Now, what's our vision? If we look at this a little bit long term, where are we headed? The Manlyhood vision is to create resources to educate and equip men to foster a thriving community of men where bonds of brotherhood and accountability form. We seek to help men be better fathers, husbands, leaders, and friends. We want to build, through Manlyhood, a financially sustainable architecture that can support itself, but also to incubate ideas and opportunities from within the Manlyhood community that support our purpose and our mission. I know, that's long, but it's the vision that I have for Manlyhood. It's not just for me. It's not, this is long-term, guys. I know where this is going to go. I know what this is going to be, and that's why I do what I do, because it's what guides it. So let's take a look at our values. I have 10 core values, guys. The first one is men matter. Men matter. I do believe that, right? We're living in a world where men do, are told that they don't matter, that they're irrelevant, that they're not needed. No, you do matter. That's why I do it. Core value number two for manlyhood is family matters. I truly believe that the family is the most important institution in our culture, in the world. And I think that we're at a place where it has become neglected and not fully realized or utilized. And so I want to make sure that we encourage men to care for and to lead and to love their families. Number three, integrity and honor matter. Yes, we need to be who we are. We need to say what is true. We need to live according to a code of ethics this matters. It matters. We need to have good character. This matters. Personal responsibility matters. That's our fourth core value here at Manlyhood. So my friend Tom Pauls, who passed away several years ago, uh, was a Boy Scout master, and uh, he worked with the kids and taught them so much. My boys uh, went through his program, and we loved him. He, he was involved with our church. He was a good friend. And he always said this all the time, like not just to the boys, but to everybody around him. And it was probably too much, but it sunk in. And it's this, if it is to be, it is up to me. If it is to be, it is up to me. That is the core of personal responsibility. And we value that here at Manlyhood. Number five, men thrive and grow in community and brotherhood with each other. So, the reason that people tend to connect with Manlyhood is either through the podcast or something we've put out there, and it resonates with them, and so they get connected. And we funnel them into the Manlyhood Man Cave, which is a great place on Facebook for men to connect and engage. But if we really want to thrive, guys, this has to go offline, real world, 3D, flesh and blood, where men are living in community and brotherhood together. The next core value, guys, truth is everywhere and wisdom knows how to pick it out. This is something that I value highly because I like to look for, and I post a lot of quotes on our Facebook page, on Instagram, and places like that. I like to look for truth. And when I find truth, it resonates and I share it because it's there. You know, a lot of people will get nervous because maybe I shared a quote and that quote came from somebody who they disagreed with politically or they disagree with on some other issue. Uh, Barack Obama has shared some quotes that I've shared on my page, and I'll get flack for it. Guess what? I didn't vote for Barack Obama. I would never vote for him, and I have very little respect for the man, to be honest with you. That's fair to say. And some people are already like, oh, I'm tuning you out. And if you are, then you're missing the point. But my point is, if he says something and it's true... A wise man can pick out the truth wherever it's found. This is a core value of mine. I think we need to learn to not just ignore things that we don't like because we don't like the people that said them. If it's true, we're going to highlight it. We're going to stand by it, and we're going to say that it matters. Number seven core value here, guys, is that men should value and respect women. Really, people should respect people. 
And believe it or not, in the manosphere, in the men's movement, you know, manlyhood is kind of a part of a shift that's happening in the online world where men are stepping up and they're saying, I don't like what's happening. We're going to stand up and we're going to take back what's ours. But in the process, a lot of these men have become disrespectful to women. That's not what we're going to do. That is not what we're going to do. We are not misogynistic. We think that women are valuable and men are valuable. And people that we disagree with are valuable. So people respect people. That's what we do. We show respect for other people. Whether they deserve it or not, we're going to show respect. Number eight, perseverance, self-control, and self-discipline are sacred and essential. So sticking with it, doing the right thing, and saying no to yourself, and making sure that you continue to do the right thing, these things are sacred, and we need to treat them as such. I don't always treat these as such. Sometimes I go against this, and I get the junk food, or I say no to the workout, and I pay for it, right? And this isn't just about health, but it's about everything. These things are sacred, and we need to treat them as such. And just reading this today is a good reminder for me. Number nine, words are powerful, and how we use them matters. I truly believe this as well, guys. Words are powerful, and how we use them matters. And number ten, leadership is steeped in influence and responsibility. I believe that everybody's a leader, and everyone should embrace and nurture that role. Everybody leads somebody, whether they mean to or want to or not. You lead somebody. Somebody looks up to you. Somebody follows you. You have influence in someone's life. That's what leadership is. And you need to look at it and treat it as something that's valuable and something that matters. Guys, that's the core values of manlyhood. And that's the whole core ops of manlyhood and why I do what I do here. And I share these with you, one, so that you can understand manlyhood a little bit better. But also, maybe you can understand your own core ops a little better. Take some time, work through the process, write it down, get yourself a little journal, because I'm going to tell you, here's a story. My life was a mess. I was not doing well. My relationship with my wife was suffering. I was grumpy all the time. I wasn't happy. I was struggling financially. I was struggling with my health. Everything was just a mess. And My wife came up the stairs and she looked at me and she said, I told you I would be with you forever, but you didn't have to make it so damn hard. And if I can make my wife mad enough to swear at me, then it's something serious. So it broke me. And I remember I got down on my knees and I spent some time praying and thinking and just trying to reevaluate where I had gone wrong. And so I pulled out a little brown journal that I carried with me to jot down people's numbers and potential client leads and things like that and ideas. And I turned to a new page and I started writing everything that I knew to be true. I started writing the things that I knew that I was meant to do. And that really was the start of me understanding my own personal purpose, mission, vision, and values. And when I wrote these, not just the manlyhood ones, but mine in particular, I actually took the time to reach out to several men that I know and I trust and admire and that know me well. And I said, and and women too, because I sent it to my wife and I sent it to, to a few other people and I said, this is what I think is my purpose, my mission, my vision, my values. I want you to take a look at it and tell me, does this truly line up with who I need to be? Does this line up with who I am? And is, does this seem right? Because there are people that know me better than I know myself sometimes. That was a very valuable and helpful time to go through that process and to start that process of then, now I know what I'm here to do and now I know how I'm going to get there. And it made all the difference in the world for me. All the difference in the world for me. My life has changed drastically. Am I perfect? No. Do I still screw up? Yes. Do I always live according to my values or even the manlyhood values? No, I don't always. Sometimes I act outside of my values. And when you do, you pay for it. When I do something that is contrary to what my mission is, I pay for it. It's costly. It is not pretty. It is not comfortable. So I just want to encourage you, take the time to identify for yourself your core ops. Put it on paper. 
frame it, stick it where you can see it all the time and live by it. If you need some help with that, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to amazon.com. You can type in core ops, Josh Hatcher, and a little green book will come up. Or you can go to the show notes and there will be a link where you can get this book. It's cheap, it's simple. Grab the book, take the time and read it and work on it. I wanna hear about your core ops. I wanna hear about your purpose, your mission, your vision, your values. Hop in the Manlyhood Man Cave and share it with us once you've done that work because I really truly believe, or if you have questions while you're in the process, let's do this together. Anyway guys, listen, I really appreciate you. I've, I'm glad that you've taken the time to engage with and listen to and share all the things that you're doing to help us get the word out there. I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate that you are putting the work in to become a better man because that's what I'm trying to do and you help me be a better man. So let's do this together. Let's make this journey together, guys. Make sure you look at the show notes, guys, the blog post that accompanies this, uh, the notes on, on the YouTube or the, the uh, podcast player because in those notes, we're gonna have links to our sponsors. So I want you to check it out and make sure you support them. I love you guys and I care about you. And I'll see you next time. If you want to be a better man, check out our website, manlyhood.com, for blogs, videos, and more from our Manlyhood team. Men, you can also join our private Facebook group, Manlyhood Man Cave, where you can meet up with a band of brothers who will challenge you and help you on your journey of manhood. This episode is produced by Hatcher Media for manlyhood.com. Be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you're listening to the show. Tune in again for more of the Manlyhood Mancast.